Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm here with the Shapeshifting Detective. It's an FMV game that released on PC a little while ago and it's coming to iOS in two weeks. It even features some of the actors from Contradiction, which I really enjoyed. Uh, so I'm excited to play. I did play a little bit, but my video got messed up, so I'm gonna start over for you. Uh, the only thing is some achievements might not pop up. But anyway, enjoy. You're listening to Radio August. Dark nights with Poe and Monroe. It's five o'clock and I'm Alice Monroe with your August update. August police are appealing for information following the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw's body was discovered last night. Chief DuPont is calling the crime a violent and despicable act. Anyone with information about the murder is urged to get in touch via the department's confidential tip hotline. It's horrible, Poe. Indeed it is. You need to learn when to keep your mouth shut. Exactly. Rewind. <laughs> Yeah, so that would give you an achievement. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. It's five o'clock and I'm Alice Monroe with your August update. August police are appealing for information following the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw's body was discovered last night. Chief DuPont is calling the crime a violent and despicable act. Anyone with information about the murder is urged to get in touch via the department's confidential tip hotline. It's horrible, Poe. Indeed it is. You need to learn when to keep your mouth shut. So... You know why you're here, don't you? The dead girl. And this. What exactly were you thinking? You have one job. Don't get caught. Do you think you can do that this time? It's a rhetorical question. You're going to a town called August. Find Chief DuPont. He's gonna think you're someone else. This person. This? is who you are now. Understood? Splendid. If someone so much as sniffs that you're different, you'll be deprecated. Deprecated. <laughs> we expect you to use your ability. Just don't get caught. And never, ever change into a child. In brighter news, August resident Mia French is celebrating the return of her missing pooch, Barley. The eight-month-old Basset Hound puppy was found outside Daryl's chicken and ribs. And that's five o'clock with Poe and Monroe. I'm Violet. Welcome to the guest house. There are some rules. In particular, no shoes in the guest house. The carpets are priceless. Now, 
How long are you staying for? That's fine. It's yours for as long as you want it. There's not been many visitors of late. Perhaps the murder will bring some tourists in. It's just you and some tarot readers at the moment. It's deathly quiet. Yes, the murder. You haven't spoken to the chief yet, have you? Chief Dupont. He's the one who booked the room for you. You look lost. You should probably go and speak to the chief. Your room is just down the hall, last on the left. It has its own back door. The chief said that's the way you'd like it. <laughs> just finishing. You don't believe? That's okay. Sometimes life is just a stream of coincidences. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Pleased to meet you, Sam. If you'd like a reading. So, what's your question, Sam? Hmm. Oh. The Page of Cups. It suggests I'm innocent of whatever it is I'm being accused of. I'm going to be seeing a lot more of you, aren't I, Sam? I'm in room one and that's down the hall. Rain's in two, Lexi's in three. And which room are you in, Sam? Mysterious. But I know you're in room four, Sam. Don't do anything I wouldn't do in there. <laughs> it was a practice that was thought of a surgery at the time, but it never really ended well. I mean, that's kind of quite a literal broken heart that we see there. I can imagine. Poe's Curiosity Shop is now closed. Uni's reply, a loud and indignant meow, was an order. <laughs> this could only mean one thing. Ivan sat up, scooped Uni to the floor, and pulled on a t-shirt. She waited for him to stand, then led him down to the kitchen, herding his slow bare feet in dangerously tight circles. Uni was a hunter, and experience told Ivan she'd got something to show him. He hoped it was a mouse or a vole, at least they were always dead. He'd had too many stunned, lopsided sparrows flapping around his kitchen. One robin, several blackbirds, usually downy fledglings with wide beaks and tails that hadn't even grown yet. Last time, she caught a magpie. It was bigger than her body, yet she still picked it up to present to him. It's pitiful cack, cack, cack. It's only protest. He'd had to put that one out of its misery. He put all of them out of their misery. A stamp to the head, the tiniest cracking of skull, blood and feathers on the ground. It was kinder that way. The kitchen was quiet. The small heaped body on the mat by the cat flap didn't seem to be moving. These were all good signs. White fur, what is that? A rat? No. Not a rat, a cat, smaller than a cat, a kitten. Ivan stared at Uni. She circled the kitten's body, stepping over its limp legs without even looking, her eyes fixed on him, waiting for what? He crouched down for a closer look. The kitten's eyes were open, blue, pink nose, pink ears, so fluffy, the cutest thing. We're on to kittens now, Uni? Uni meowed. Ivan pushed himself up and went to get a towel. When he returned, 
The kitten was scrambling at the mat with its front paws, trying to drag itself up. Its back legs lay helplessly on the floor. No, no, no. Ivan dropped down next to the kitten. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. Tears blurred his vision. He stroked the kitten with the side of his finger. Don't move, okay? Just don't try to move. But the kitten wouldn't stop struggling, suffering. Ivan clenched the towel, then draped it over the kitten's head. He stood and raised his foot. It would have to be a good one. Harder even than a magpie. One and done. The kitten's skull was softer than he expected. It caved easily, the thin bones crackling and fizzing with bubbling blood. The wet towel stuck to his heel as he lifted it, unveiling the bloody mess he'd made, and he quickly replaced it, shutting his eyes hard to try to erase the sight. It didn't work, of course. Ivan slumped to the floor as Uni padded over to inspect the darkening towel. Blood trickled along the groove of the floor tiles, and she lowered her head to lap it hungrily. Oh. Ivan pushed her away. Not for you, Uni. He just needed a moment. He sat in silence until he could no longer hear his own breathing, until Uni stopped pacing and sat grudgingly opposite him, until the blood slowed and started to dry. Finally, he shifted onto his knees and lifted the kitten in both hands. Its floppy body barely as big as his palms. He left the towel on the floor. He'd need it to clean up later. He held the kitten against his chest, partly as an apology, partly so he wouldn't have to see it, and made his way back to the bedroom with Uni in soft pursuit. Nola was awake. Not even she could sleep through Uni's wake-up calls. She was sitting up, cross-legged, thumbing her phone, but put it down on the bedside table as soon as Ivan walked in. I thought I heard something going on, she said, smiling. Uni jumped up on the bed and Nola leaned forward to nuzzle her nose. Have you brought something for Mummy? Ivan perched on the edge of the bed and placed the kitten on the duvet. Did you order this? He asked. His voice sounded shakier than usual. Didn't I mention it? She started pulling at the fur. She hadn't mentioned it. Ivan would have remembered. He lay down and closed his eyes, listening to her tearing the kitten's skin. Thanks, babe, she said between chews. No worries, said Ivan. Anything for you. <laughs> Dreams. And nightmares. With per Good, you got my message. Chief Inspector DuPont. I wasn't sure you'd come, but I suppose you're between jobs? Oh, I'm still recovering from that. It's, it's hard to stop the radio. I mean, you can stop the radio whenever you want, but when you're in the middle of a story like that, I don't know how much of the radio... When I was playing before, I got different stuff. I don't know how much they loaded on up here, but it's, it's like you don't want to leave a story in the middle. Whew, all right. Well, we both know that's not true. But I like it. Sam, that's your cover now. So, the job. Dorota Shaw, 21, the compass cellist, redhead. Strangled. I know who did it, but I need proof. It's the tarot readers. Yes. Keep up, Sam. That's the girl who was murdered. Because they predicted it. The older one, uh, Bronwyn, she came into my office last night talking all crazy and saying Dorota was in trouble. I did my best not to lock her up. By the way, this is the detective from Contradiction, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> it all sounded crazy to me. Tarot, the spirit world, cards that move, trans-dimensional thingamajigs? To be honest, I thought she'd probably been smoking something, and that's why I didn't take it seriously. Because things, I don't have enough on her, that's where you come in. The free guest house day isn't free. I need you to work the case and report back to me. Find out things from the inside. Can you do it? Okay. 
I'll be telling everyone that you've been hired by the Shores because obviously local law enforcement is either too incompetent or too overworked to solve anything. That gives you a license to talk to people, but only notionally. Don't actually touch people or annoy them. You don't have any real authority, understand? But you help me out, I'll help you. Do I have to spell it out? I'll make your problem go away, or at least sink it to the bottom of a pile of paperwork. Your old town? The problem? Come and find me when you're settled. This is Second Chance Sunday for you, Sam. Don't blow it. What do you want to know? She was a cellist, selected for a scholarship at Juilliard. It was in the local paper. I'm more of a Bon Jovi fan myself. Don't read the paper, do you? Yesterday, Monday the 9th at approximately 9pm, according to the coroner, we got a call from the mother just after 10pm. Do, do I have an alibi for last night? Do I? Okay. I was here, and there are video monitors that will prove it. Thanks for ruling me out, genius. <laughs> In her bedroom, she was naked, strangled. No signs of sexual activity of any kind. It was a weird scene to look at. There was one thing, but it's strictly between you and me. Dorota had a gold coin in her mouth. I'm being serious now, Sam, not a word of this. Huh. It's the one thing only the killer would know. Ah, uh, all here, runs the local guest house. Lovely lady. Where are you going with this, Sam? What she told you? She told you she's taking pills, didn't she? Let me handle Violet. She didn't kill anyone. Not much. Perhaps you should do some investigating? Moving forward and keep striving for the best. Thank you for your dream. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe. I assume you've been to see Chief DuPont already? Not really. I'm sure she was a precious lamb, though. Yes, a lamb. Young. Innocent. Lambs get slaughtered, though, don't they? <laughs> Nice, yes, that's a good description. Actually, I thought she was a bit slutty, to be honest. Sorry. I'm gossiping. I don't want to talk ill of the dead. Ask her boyfriend. Oscar lives at the vicarage next to the church. Don't tell him I sent you, though. I'm sure he's sick of seeing people already. There, tarot readers. I'm thinking of asking them to leave, actually. Because they may have killed someone. It's not great for my reputation, is it? Stay at Violet's, the home of killers and hobos. I'm sorry, it's a derogatory word, isn't it? But strange people seem to gravitate towards this guest house, Sam. Get the sign changed. It's the strangest thing. I honestly don't remember. But I imagine I was here or getting groceries somewhere. Hmm. I've driven by it, never actually been in it. I take clozapine. I think they're for anxiety. I'm a very anxious person. Shouldn't she know what her meds are for? I don't know, Dr. Sam. You tell me. <laughs> Team. Dr. Ian Remington. Dr. Hanako Yutani. Sam, is it? I'm sensing you're not here for a reading. Chief Dupont thinks I did it. I'm hoping you'll convince him otherwise. All I'm asking is that you dig a little deeper than the Chief. I had nothing to do with Dorota's death. We saw danger in the cards and we tried to stop it. 
Trust me, Sam, we're on the same team. We saw it in the cards, not images, feelings, impressions. Tarot can be very powerful. Not these cards. They only tell us what they want us to know. In my room, reading, I found a trashy romance novel under the bed. I'm assuming it's Violet's. It's all swooning heroines and brooding vampire Casanovas. Thank God Lexi saved me. She came to my room to chat for a little while. That was around nine, I think. You can ask her. I said the book was trashy. Look at this place. If her guest house is anything to go by, Violet's the opposite of trashy. At this point, Dimitri starts to wonder if the pit even had a bottom <laughs> and dreaded what they would find there if it did. You must be a new guest. Or you're burglaring us. I'm Rain, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Sam. Enjoy your stay. Uh, the hot water goes off at nine, by the way. So it's cold showers from there on in. It really bugs me. I don't know when I can shape shift. Shape shift. Um, I assume it comes later because I haven't seen any way to do it yet. I didn't know her. I know she was called Dorota Shaw. She was young, had red hair, a talented musician. Next victim, whoa, <laughs> hold on a sec. We don't even know if there's gonna be a next victim or not. We'll do another group reading soon, and then we'll have a better idea. We did a reading, a group reading actually, with a special tarot deck. The three of us get together and read the same cards. Bronwyn says it makes the whole thing stronger or more powerful or something. But I'm pretty sure I'd get the same answers just on my own. Mercury? It's not exactly from here. Uh, with a normal tarot deck, you'd have the question, so you'd be the querent. With Mercury, it gives you the question and the answer. The cards themselves kind of change. It's a special deck. I don't have it at the moment. Bronwyn has it. I was in my room. Praying, actually. I don't believe in God, but I was still praying. It didn't work. My prayer. That the girl would be safe. All right, we're going to accelerate your descent a bit. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Dr. Utani sounded tired. Hi. Sam, is it? Come on in. Make yourself at home. Me casa is you casa. <laughs> Come on. I don't know anyone in this town, except for Bronwyn and Rain, obviously, and Violet, and the Chief, and now you. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Good old-fashioned fortune-telling. Well, kind of. We drew a card each and smushed them all together. Do you know what the most dangerous tarot card is? <laughs> You've done your research. The happy squirrel was vague and mysterious, but not evil. The Five of Swords? I think so anyway. There's nothing more dangerous than someone taking whatever they want no matter the cost. Yeah, I did. Rain got the Knight of Wands, that's Dorota, and Bronwyn got the Ten of Swords, which is, well, you know, ee, ee, ee. swords in general are bad. She's like my big sister, so pretty well. No. The cards told us to. Well, the cards of Rain. Taro gives us a rough direction and he narrows it down with some astrological jiggery pokery. He's basically a walking esoteric library. And if that sounds dull, let me reassure you, it is. <laughs> no? Well, yeah. Well, no. We have a job to do. I didn't say job. I said job. 
<laughs> okay, we make a um, cheese obelisk, a chob, and depending on the shape of that chob, we get different answers to questions. That's a pretty good nonsense to come up with on the spot. No, you don't. I was in my room all night with Bronwyn. We were um, painting our nails. You can ask Bronwyn. We were together. Not together together. That sounded kinkier than I meant it to. <laughs> Find some of the small markings in the pitch black darkness. So the work was tedious and fiddly. Mercury? Sure. I'll just get it. It feels a bit sacrilegious just spreading it out to show you. It doesn't really answer questions, it more asks them. Do you want it to ask you a question, Sam? Hmm. It wants to know if you're happy being the person you are now. Hmm. Mercury agrees with you. It's nice that you're being honest with me and with yourself. Dimitri's heart was beating in his chest and his stomach started to turn inside out. He tried climbing up the rope in a panic. Finally, um. he felt the sweet relief. It's six o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Police investigating the murder of Dorota Shaw are appealing to the community to help catch her killer. The body of 21-year-old Miss Shaw, an accomplished cellist, was found in her home last night. Police are describing the murder as a violent and despicable act. Monroe? It's just terrible. Meanwhile, out of respect for the victim and her family, this weekend's Tulip Festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced shortly, so do stay tuned to Radio August for updates. I heard Dorota Shaw was due to play this weekend. At the Tulip Festival. Indeed. I understand why they'd want to postpone it. Tonight the weather will be mostly dry and warm, but be on the lookout for dark clouds on the horizon, as there may be scattered showers. Best take an umbrella, Monroe, so you don't get wet. I like getting wet. That's six o'clock with Poe and Monroe. <laughs> He's made at other lunar sites. Dr. Utani was able to create a rough translation of the word. Who are you? Right, because the local police are so rubbish. It's been a day, a whole day. It's typical of them. Yeah, I went round there in the afternoon. Uh, her parents were at work and we were, you know, hanging out. I left at about five. I'm playing football. It was just five aside. Uh, finished at about half nine. I called her, but she never picked up. Not much. They always seemed happy to see me. I don't think they meant it. They wanted Dorota to focus on her music. Not long. A couple of months, maybe. But we did care for each other. No, no one. She was really popular. What, you mean watching us? That's disturbing. No, no, it couldn't have been. The only place you could have hidden would be in the closet, and I suppose someone could have hidden in the closet. Not hidden. Well, she liked it. Liked me to watch. Not, not other guys, just she had these, you know, voyeur fantasies. She'd ask me to hide in the upstairs closet and then she'd walk in, strip off, start touching herself. She got upset if I came out before she'd finished. I'm sorry, is this helping with the investigation? Clothes, mainly. I did see something that freaked me out a bit. She had a wedding dress in there. She knew I'd seen it, but we never talked about it. Not even as a joke. The breathing suddenly stopped. 
Any more news on Oscar Wainwright? Yep, that's what he told me too. I'm not a suspect. Just the tarot readers. No one else is remotely suspicious compared to them. Uh, Dorota's an only child. She lived with her mum and dad. Monday night was movie night, so they'd go and watch the 8 o'clock at the Odeon. Dorota would get the house to herself. They're devastated, naturally. They left town to stay with relatives. They didn't do it, Sam. Well, uh, perhaps I should have made them stay. Rain says he was praying in his room, alone. Nobody corroborates. Bronwyn and Lexi say they were in the same room last night. Shame they can't agree which one. Oscar's not a suspect. He was playing football last night with lots of witnesses. According to Oscar, Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet, which is strange. Violet says she doesn't remember last night, but I've got that in hand. That's it. Dimitri tried to scream, but there was no sound. All right, I'm going to take a break here, but that's the shape-shifting uh, shape detective. Uh, I don't know when you get to the actual shape-shifting part, so hopefully soon. I'm curious to try that out. Uh, anyway, check it out in a couple of weeks when it comes to iOS, and if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye-bye.